right, Rabbi? 84B, not an easy Gemara. Okay, this Gemara sort of encapsulates everything that we've seen until now. It's supposed to make me feel better. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, 84B, about uh, two thirds down, down the page. Kosav Betoyche. Okay, so let's do a little bit of a, a brief background. First mission Hamagarish was the guy who made who gave the divorce with an exception. I'm divorcing you except except for so and so. What exactly happened? Was it given as an exception, as a as a chutz, or was it done on a tanai? I'm making a condition that you can't remet, you can't get married to so and so. We had a major machikas between Rabbi Yesi, Rabbi Huda, and the Rabbanon. The mainstream opinion is that our mission is talking about a chutz. The opinion of Rabbi Yehuda is that the debate is with regard to Amanas. Chutz, again, is an exception. Chutz is you're permitted to marry everyone except for so and so. Okay. So it's changing the format of the divorce itself. Whereas Amanas, the condition is no, 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 you're divorced. By the way, I'm making a condition you can't get married to, to so and so. So you're pulling the exception out of the divorce itself and into a condition. Okay. If the debate is about chutz, then everybody agrees that Amanas works. A condition works. If the debate is about Amanas, everyone would agree that chutz does not work. Okay. The mission says at the end, if he wrote the condition in the divorce itself, even if it was erased afterwards, it doesn't work. In other words, in the Mishnah, when the guy gave a divorce with an exception, so she gives, according to the Rabbanon at least, she gives the divorce back to him. He goes ahead and gives it back to her without making a condition and the divorce is kosher. Maybe you'd think that that would work in the document. No, it doesn't work. Once, which, when we're talking about the document itself, uh, as soon as, um, as, as soon as the, um, the, 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 you can't erase the condition in the document. Okay. Omar of Safar, of Safar says, when the mission says you wrote it in the divorce, it means that you actually did write it in the divorce. So what do you think the Gemara's next words are? It's pretty obvious. That's what it says in the mission. Okay. Oh, I would have think Okay. So we spoke about, you spoke yesterday about the divorce being comprised of two components, the Torah and the Teufetz. The Teufus is the outline. It's sort of the standard document. The tariff is the specifics and the main component of the divorce, which is the words of the to follow them. You can keep a stock of divorces that are ready to use, but you can only fill out the Teufus, the sort of outline. You can't fill out the specifics. Now, the, the question really here, he, how, the, the, the way he's driving the question is, uh, maybe there's a difference between, let's say, let's say you have a divorce. By the way, uh, God willing, tomorrow, I will, I will get hold of an actual copy of the divorce and uh, we, we'll be able to go through it. Later today, we'll learn about the actual divorce and it will be much easier to understand if I bring in, in an actual one. Uh, so I, it was, there was a, divorce, a couple of divorces flying around and uh, hopefully I'll get a copy of one. I used to have my Gemara, some ancient divorces were in like in the 60s. Mm. Um, and my, 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 it was my other Gemara, which was at my parents. So I don't have it with me. Uh, we got really, we'll, we'll get it, so we'll be able to explain everything. Uh, you know, we'll be able to see how it looks. Okay, now, the, so you have the, the the question here is maybe he, we're talking about a scenario where the condition is put after the document, but if the condition was put before the document, I feel all pen on me like. In other words, the, the cipher is writing the divorce. He's writing the main part of the divorce. The guy tell while the, the cipher is writing, the guy says this. Divorce, by the way, is being written on condition that my wife cannot get married to, to Ruben, or except that my wife can't marry, can't marry Ruben. Maybe that, that is a verbal statement that cannot be canceled since it was spoken at the beginning of the document. To Mashmala, that no, because it was spoken, it could be canceled, and the rest of the document is fine. In other words, when we say it can't be erased, it makes it meaning that the condition, if the condition is written down, whether it's written down at the end of the document or it's written in the beginning of the document, it can't be erased. But if it was spoken verbally, even if it was spoken while the document was written, it's fine. Okay, Rava disagrees. 
When we talk about the condition being written, we mean it's being written at the end of the, at the conclusion of the document, but before the tariff, in other words, in the middle of the document, then if you made a verbal condition, that verbal condition invalidates the divorce in a permanent way. Rava was according to his own opinion. Rava used to tell those that write divorces, basically shut up the husband. In other words, so the husband tells you to write the divorce, you know, you gag him, gag him up, you throw him in the in the side room, you turn off all the microphones, you don't listen to him until you finish writing the divorce. I don't know if it has to be that violent, but something like that. Until you conclude writing the Torah of the divorce. Why? Because if he opens his mouth and starts saying, conditions this, condition that, condition that, all those conditions are become part of the document itself, even if they're verbal, because they're being they're being spoken about the document. Meaning, I only want you to write this divorce on condition that my wife gives me a million dollars, on condition she can't get married to so-and-so. And therefore, you have to keep them shut up until you finish writing the tariff so that there are no conditions attached to the writing of the documents. And the reason for this, these conditions cannot be undone. Conditions that were made at the moment that the, trans, the, the, the divorce was transacted, those could, be, those could be undone. Give back the divorce and have a husband give it again. But conditions that go into the document itself cannot be undone. And therefore, we have to keep them quiet until we finish writing the divorce. All conditions invalidate a divorce. Divri Rebbe. Okay. In other words, Rebbe says if you write a condition in the divorce, it invalidates it. It doesn't make a difference what type of condition. The rabbis say, whatever invalidates verbally what we saw in the Mishnah, either a chutz for almanas, etc. And, and again, we saw another category of divorces, which is another category of tanah, which is a tanai that has no limit. Right, you can never drink wine again. So all those paisal b'ksav, those invalidating writing as well. Because any paisal pe, any paisal b'ksav, and with that which doesn't become invalidated verbally does not become invalidated in, in the written documents. Okay, so Gemara explains chutz she paisal pe, a statement of chutz, an exception that she can't get met. She's permitted to everyone except for Reuven. That that invalidates divorce verbally b'ksav. It also invalidates the document. Almanas, a condition. If let's say he says you're divorced, but on a condition you don't get married to Ruven, we are. It does not get invalidated verbally. It does not. It does not invalidate the divorce if it was written down as well. Amr Abzera, Abzera says, Okay, so Abzera really. Uh, Sets the stage of the Gemara has two versions of this. The first first version is from Zero. Zero says we're talking here about the Fnat Tariff before, not before, in, in middle of the document. In middle of the, the middle of the document, this condition that she cannot get married to Rufin. The Rebbe Savar goes reading Amanas Atul Chutz. Rebbe says the divorce is invalid. Why? Because we're concerned that Amanas, a condition, looks like Chutz, an exception. And therefore, we invalidate the document. Rabban and Stavri and the rabbis say, we don't make such a degree. But if it was written at the conclusion of the document, everyone would agree the document is kosher. Okay. The, the, the Mishnah. The Mishnah says that if you wrote in the document the condition, then it becomes it's possible. It's not valid. Now we already said that the mission is referring to a scenario of chutz, avl almanas But according to the Mishnah, which is not like the opinion of Rabbi, again, the Mishnah and Rabbi Yisrael Rabbi Huda are disagreeing. What are they disagreeing about? The debate between the rabbis and Rabbi Lazar. So we have like three levels of debate here. Again, the rabbis say that. Uh, the rabbis say that almanas or chutz does not work. Rabbi Lozer says it does work. What is the debate? According to the mission, the debate is about chutz, but almanas, everyone agrees, is a valid divorce. According to Rabbi Yehuda, the, 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 the dispute is about almanas, the condition. 
Rav Lazar says the condition works. The Chum say it doesn't work. But by Chutz, everyone agrees it doesn't work. Together? Okay. <laughs> if, I, if I lose anyone in Zoom, feel free to stop me. Okay. So the Mishnah we said was talking about a scenario of Chutz, not a scenario of Almanas. That was the opinion of Rabbi Yisrael Rabbi Huda, not the opinion of the Mishnah. Av Almanas, like Puzzle, but everyone agrees that a condition does not invalidate a divorce. Okay, that's the case. Now let's try to fit the Mishnah according to either Rebbe or the Chachamim. Remember, Rebbe and the Chachamim here have a debate whether a condition can be written down in a document. Rebbe says all conditions don't work. Chachamim say conditions work. So what are we talking about? What's the, what's the debate between Rebbe and the Chachamim? It could be a scenario where we are... The the when we, the mission is said again the mission is talking about chutz when the mission says kasev b'toycha you wrote the divorce in the document and you wrote a chutz it could be lefnei tarif v'rabbanon one second. Okay. Now, in this debate between the, between the Rabbonon and Rabbi Lozer in the Mishnah, the debate about chutz, the rabbis say a chutz is not a valid divorce. Rabbi Lozer says it is a valid divorce. But Almanas, everyone agrees, is kosher. We are exactly what was the Almanas put, put in the document. It could be that it was put before the tariff of Rabbonon, and it's, the, and it's the opinion of the rabbis who disagree with Rebbe, because Rebbe would say if the doc, if, if the almanas is in the tariff itself, then the divorce is invalid, because the Xero were concerned that maybe he'll switch the almanas for chutz, therefore we invalidate both types of documents, whether it's an almanas or a chutz. If that's the case, and it must be the opinion of the Rabbonon of Rebbe, which say, which don't which don't make that distinction. They say if the, if since an almanas typically works, an almanas in the document also works, even if it's before the tariff, before the conclusion. The Bayesim, or alternatively, la akra the almanas that's kosher, the almanas that's kosher, if it's written in the document, is after the conclusion of the document. The Divarakal, and it could be either according to Rebbe or according to Chacham. Please, 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 please. Uh, fourth line of uh, 85A. Now again. Rebbe, Rebbe says that we, we're concerned that the debate between Rebbe and Chacham is whether a condition works in the document. Rebbe Zera is explaining that that debate is about before the tariff, but after the tariff, everyone agrees that the condition would be valid, just like a condition al would be valid, a verbal condition. Okay, so therefore, if, if we say if the condition was an almanas written at the conclusion of the document, according to the Rabbanon, according to Rebbe Lazar, according to Rebbe, according to Rabbanon, in both cases, in all cases, the halakha would be the document is kosher. Divorce is kosher. Okay, next version of the Gemara. This is the opposite of Rav Zera, right? Rav and Rav Zera, often contemporaries disagree. Rav flips it around, okay. So same Gemara, but in, in, you know, a little more stringent. Rav Amar, Rav says as follows. The debate between, uh, between Rebbe and the Rabbanon. Again, Rebbe says that a, a, a condition written in the document is in, invalidates the document. The Rabbanon say that a condition in the document does not invalidate the document, provided that is that it, it is an acceptable condition. And the, a, a kosher condition verbally would be kosher in the document. Rebbe says, no, they're both invalid. Any type of condition in the document is invalid. Okay. So according to Rav, Rav says, is this debate is the Akhar Torah. At the conclusion of the document, the Rebbe Savar Gazrin and Otto Lefnet Harif, Rabbonin Savar Eli Gazrin, Otto Lefnet Harif. Al Lefnet Harif, did I call possible? 
Uh, Rava says you put a condition in, in inside the divorce itself. That's a change of the divorce. Everyone agrees it's not kosher. The only debate here is when it was written at the conclusion of the document. At the end of the document, you wrote the condition. According to Rebbe, we say, no, 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 we don't want any conditions. Just like a condition in, is invalid inside the document, it's invalid at the conclusion of the document. And the rabbis say that that is, a, that is not, a, not, a, not a cause for concern. So a condition at the end of the document, provided that it's an acceptable condition, is kosher. Okay, now get back to the mission. The Mishnah, the debate between Rabbi Lozer and the Rabbanon. Rabbi Lozer says a, a, a chutz is valid. The Rabbanon says it's not valid. Mishnah specifically is talking about chutz, but Amun asks, everyone agrees it's kosher. And that would be the same with regard to the conclusion of the Mishnah of Kosa B'Toyche. The Mishnah says you wrote the condition inside the document. The document is invalid. <clears throat> we're, we're saying that the, 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 the understanding of the Mishnah is chutz, meaning that even according to Rabbi Lozer, that would be invalid. But if you wrote an, a condition, even, even if the condition was written inside the document, uh, sorry, even if the condition was written on the document, it would be kosher. It must be if that condition was written at the conclusion of the document. The Rabbanon here, in the opinion of the Rabbanon, that disagree with Rebbe. The Rabbanon, why? Because if the, doc, if the condition was written inside the document, then if the condition was written inside the document, then both Rebbe and the Rabbanon agree that the, the, get, the get is invalid because you can't have any condition in the document. It must be that when the Mishnah talks about writing a condition, it's at the conclusion of the document. And, and it would be kosher according to the Rabbanon, but not according to Rebbe, who's concerned that we might confuse the end of the document with the beginning of the document. Tony Avud of Oven Kamedra of Zero. Avud, the father of Oven, said in front of Zero, Kos of Get Al-Tanai, Diver Akol Kosher. If the divorce was written on condition, it's invalid. So the Gemara says, Divrei Kol Posel, Amifik Pligi, this seems to be subject to a debate. Al Amal Divrei Kol Kosher. Everyone agrees that get that's written on condition is kosher. The Hechidami, what's the scenario? La'achar Tariq, it was written after the Tariq, which is like the opinion of Rovo. I'm sorry, like the, like the opinion of Rosera. Okay. So, okay, now it's a pretty radical shift. First, he starts off saying everyone agrees, possible, and then we switch to everyone agrees, kosher. Valema, maybe let's make a different shift. Let, let's make a different shift. Valema has raised a puzzle. Instead of, let's just say that, that in, um, the, the Rebbe, instead of saying everybody says it's possible, let's just say Rebbe said it's possible, because Rebbe says it's possible if you write it in, inside the document. Is why is it more logical to switch it from Apostle to Kashar than to say that switch it from everybody to Rebbe? Why is that more logical? So Mara says, ton of different call asnaya kosher, asnaya. In other words, the author probably heard everybody because everybody's not, I mean, everybody's like a big word. That's what he remembers. And therefore, Apostle Kashar, Apostle Mechlef, Mechlef, like he got confused in Kashar and Apostle. I raise up the different call, like Mechlef, but it's unlike. Likely that I got to confused between a single opinion and the consensus opinion, the, 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 sort of the universally agreed upon opinion. Okay. Mishnah on 85a. A little bit easier from here. Okay, so here the Mishnah, just go to the Mishnah outside. Two, two, two scenarios in the Mishnah. First scenario in the Mishnah is. He divorces his wife, except for a forbidden relationship to her. So I'm, uh, the guy says, I'm divorcing you on condition you don't marry your father, your brother, etc. Uh, my brother, in other words, the, 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 the husband's brother is also prohibited, also an Arafah. All these are prohibited anyway. So she's not, he's not actually prohibiting her with, to anyone because all those women are prohibited. All those men are prohibited to her. Alternatively, let's say he says, I'm divorcing you on condition you don't marry a Kayan because you're a divorcee, you can't marry a Kayan. In that case, well, she is prohibited, but there is Kedushan. So let's see the Mishnah. Exception of, of your father, my father, your brother, my brother, to a slave, to a non-Jew, or to anyone who does not have Kedushan. So these people effectively are prohibited anyway, and there's no way she can marry them because there's no Kedushan. So then kosher, then the divorce is kosher. 
These are forbidden relationships, but they're forbidden in the sense that, that they're valid if they're done and you'll, you'd get Malchus. And in that case, since there is since Kedushin exists, I feel about there, even though it's sinful, puzzle the divorce is invalid. And, and again, this is probably according to the opinion of the Rabbanon that say that, that a divorce with an exception is invalid. According to Rabbi Lazar, it would be you know, could, could probably be kosher. Okay, the general rule of the Mishnah, the general rule includes anything similar, which is any, any type of relationship that has a penalty of kores. There is no kedushin. Call the Seifa, the, the general rule of the second part of the Mishnah, other types of prohibitions of lavin that are not specifically listed, where we say the condition, where we say the divorce is not valid because of the, because of the exception. Rav had the following question from Rav Nachman. Can't get married to a, to a child. What's the story? Me, I'm going to do we say, do we say, that at least the time being, a young boy cannot give condition? Or do we say no? He's of the type that has Kedushin, even if at the moment he doesn't have Kedushin. So Amar Lais, he says to him, we have a clear proof, a, a, a young girl could be divorced with divorced from a marriage that her father accepted on her behalf. And Amar says, she's a child, and it has to be that when she's divorced, she's able to get remarried. But because she's a child, she's unable to get remarried because she can't accept Kedushin on her own behalf now that she's divorced. So, but, but it must, but, but she could get divorced. So what does that mean? That means that when we talk about being able to get married after her divorce, it doesn't actually mean that she can actually get married. It means she's of the type that could get married. She's in the category that typically has Kedushin. A child as well. It's somebody who does have Kedushin, even if at the moment, uh, he is unable to give Kedushin. And therefore, that would be considered an exception. Chutzman Hanelodim, an exception of anyone who is born in the future. Ma, what's the story? Do we say that right now none of them were born? So therefore, it's a valid divorce. Uh, because eventually they will be born. Therefore, the divorce is, it is an exception. And the divorce is not valid. So, so we responded to him. Was Reb Nachman responding to responding to Rovo? To Nisto, we have a brayso. To a slave or a non-Jew. That that, uh, that if the exception was made to a slave or a non-Jew, then she is still divorced because those are prohibited anyway. But hold on a second. Maybe they'll convert. Maybe they'll get freed. Um. It's not very different than a. One second, it's 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 not very different than a scenario of. Of a of the the future born children, so too among among the non Jews there might be future converts, you know, or or among the slaves, future people that will be freed. They can convert. Zimar says, no, we don't presume they're going to convert. Honey, but these uh, they are they are uh, going to be born, and therefore, you know, they sort of more or less exist already to some extent, and it's considered it's considered an exception, and therefore the divorce is not valid. Except for her sister's husband. A man cannot marry two sisters when they're both alive even if he divorces one. But it may be her sister will die, and then she can marry She can marry her husband. Do we say right now he's an Arafon, therefore it's not it's, it's not considered an exception because she's anyways prohibited? Or do we say, no, well, maybe her sister will die, and then she'll be able to marry him. So it is an exception. 
So Rav Nachman says, "Tini saw we have a mission. The mission says that the slave and a slave and a non-Jew are not considered exceptions because they're prohibited anyway." Slimar says, "But what about the fact that they could convert?" Slimar says, "Geras, okay, and, and, and therefore, and we're not concerned about that. So too, we shouldn't be concerned about the her sister's husband uh, being able to marry her when her, if if her sister would die." So Amar is um, so Rover responded. Rover responded. Conversion is not likely. Uh, death is is likely, and therefore you know everyone's going to die, and uh, therefore it's more likely, and, and it, it is considered an exception. Chutz miznusech, with the exception of. Your znos, in other words, a promiscuous relationship. Ma, what's the story? Ben Esuin Hale Shire, he let there, there's no. He allow he's allowing her to get married, so there's no there's nothing that's left over by the divorce. I double Shire Bia, or do we say that he left over? Since with regards relationship wise, there's the limitations on the relationship she can carry, that she can have. Amar Lei, so he's sort of Nachman says to Nisua. We learned from the Mishnah La Abu Lo Ficha, that if he if he um. If he makes a condition that you cannot get married to your father, she cannot get married to her father. And obviously, what are we talking about? If we're talking about marriage, could she marry her father? Obviously not. We're talking about znus, promiscuous relationship. And it's not an exception because to a father, anyways, she's prohibited to. However, but to somebody else, Shire, then it is about then it would be considered an exception to the divorce, even though the exception here is a promiscuous relationship. Samara says there's no proof. When we talk about it, it could be that the mission is talking about where actually she went ahead and started quote unquote marrying her father. There's no way that you can't marry your father. Uh, you can live with your father, you can violate the law and it can be an ancestral relationship, but there's no way to call it a marriage. But the Gemara says maybe when the mission says marriage, the mission doesn't actually mean marriage. It means living like somebody who's married. And that's what the mission is referring to. But it could be that if he said, uh, if he said znos, if he said a promiscuous relationship, then he would have the, uh, he would be able to limit her even if, um, uh, even if it was a regular, per even if it was a regular person, that would not be considered an exception. Okay. The Gemara has a bunch of other items here, different types of exceptions. To, to, to some extent, these things are uh, either compared to marriage or components of marriage. And the question is, how critical are they? So the first one is Chutz uh, Mishalekadarka. Part of my language, Shalekadarka is, is, uh, is uh, an anal relationship. Ma, Ma, what's the story? Uh, do we say that uh, normal relationships are, are not prohibited and therefore 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 it, he did not leave over anything or perhaps sort of both types quote unquote types of relationships are both in the category of mishkavi isha laying with a woman they're both considered equal in some in some regard and therefore it is considered that you you've you've left behind you've, you've kept some part of the marriage intact similarly he wants to be able to nullify her vows he's letting her marry whoever she wants there's nothing left over i don't know or do you say the marriage is still intact because he's calling himself a husband since he's remaining with the authority to nullify her vows with the exception of the, the fact that you, you either you um, that you can't eat truma if you marry Kayan. Ma, what do we? What's the story? Binisu and Halishai, or he's letting her marry Kayan. I don't know. What do we say? Kenyan Kasvikes. A, a Kayan's wife is called Kenyan Kasvik, an acquisition, you know, through through money. And therefore, because he is, uh, because he is. He, he, because he's limiting her to, to that type of acquisition, that also means that he's effectively limiting her, her marriage, her marriage, and therefore it is considered an exception. Chutzmi or he wants to still inherit her. 
my hope. And it's soon Hala Shire, I tell him Hala Shire, if you're a Shire Siksif. Do we say that, look, he didn't, he's letting her marry whoever she wants, or do you say, no, 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 inheritance is a component of marriage, so therefore you did you did leave behind some marriage. I'm, I'm divorcing you, except that you can't get married with a document. There really is no other limitations, it's fine. I don't know, or do we say, or do we say, no, 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 you need to have, every woman needs to be able to receive Kedushin in all three manners. If she can't, um, then that is in effect a limitation in the divorce itself. You're a limit. You're, you're sort of still married to her, and therefore, uh, it, it is an exception. The divorce would not be valid. And of course, the remark goes with take them. These questions stand. Okay, Mishnah bottom of eighty-five a. Who shall get tarei mataras haladam? The main component of the get is the words you are permitted to marry whoever you'd like. And Yehuda says. It's not sufficient. We need to know how exactly are you divorcing her. You need to write in, in the divorce these words. And this item should be for you. A, a, uh, a book of, of uh, separation and a letter of sending you away. The get peturin and a divorce of, of permitting you to marry whoever you please. So that you can. That anyone who wants to marry you, who stands up to marry you, can't marry you. Okay, in other words, the difference between Rabbi and the Rabbi is the rabbis don't require the divorce to say, from this divorce. And, the, and in other words, the rabbis say it's sort of intuitive. If you're giving a divorce, well, how do you think she's being permitted with, with the document? Rabbi just says, no, the document must specify that it itself is the divorce. Gufa Shogat Shechor, the main component of a freedom uh, emancipation, you are a free woman, you, uh, you or a free man, you belong to yourself. Okay, the Gemara says, it would seem obvious. The guy told, wrote in his divorce to his wife, or told her verbally, you're a free woman. That's a meaningless statement. Similarly, he told his, his maidservant, you're permitted to everyone. You can permitted to marry whoever you'd like. That's also a meaningless statement. That's because a, a, a married woman is not enslaved and she doesn't need to be freed. And a enslaved woman is not permitted uh, to marry anybody. And the, the limitations on her are not related to her, the, the permissibility of her marriage. Uh, it relates to the fact that she's indentured and she's a slave. Okay, what happens if he said, let's say he tells his wife, you are yourself. Mahal. Does he mean to say you are yourself and can marry whoever you please? Or does he mean to say, well, you, you know, you, you don't have to work for me anymore? There's certain obligations a woman has to provide for her husband. You're exempt from those obligations. Ravina says Ravashi, Toshma, let's examine this. The time we learned, Kufa shall get The main component of a um, the main component of a get shikhar, of a uh, emancipation, it are the words Harat Maskar and Harat Latsika. You're, you're, you are free, you belong to yourself. If you have a maidservant that, that owns that, that her, 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 you know, her body is owned by her master and she acquires herself with the words, you belong to yourself. A woman who is not, the husband does not own her, like Koshkin, it would certainly seem that she does acquire herself. And therefore, it seems that the words Tarat La'atzmacha are is a valid use for the divorce. Okay, let's just finish with two dots here. Amr Ravina Ravashi. Ravina says Ravashi. Amr Laavi Ainli Eisikbach. He tells a slave, I don't want to have anything to do with you. Maha, what's the story? Is that a valid terminology of an emancipation? Amr Ravchon Ravashi. So Ravchon says Ravashi. Amr and some say Ravchon and Mechusna Ravashi. It was Ravchon from the town of Chusna. Toshma, let's examine this. Titania, Hamaycher Abdul Abdelchavan Yotzel Cheres. Somebody who sells a slave to a non-Jew goes out free, but Tzorach gets Shikhar Mi Rabbi Rishon, but but still requires an emancipation document from the original master. So if you sell your slave to a non-Jew, the slave is freed, but you still have to write him an emancipation. Am Rishon Ben Gamliel, Rishon Ben Gamliel says, "The Medvar Mumurim Shalei Kasev Alav Aina, Alav Kasev Alav Aina, Aina Zayu Shikhar." If you write an Ainai, that frees him. What is an Ainai? My Ainai. Amr of Sheshis, the Kosovo, the Kishitivar, the Menu, and the Asikbach. He wrote in the document when he sold this, 
when he sold a slave, he wrote the slave a document that says, if you run away from your master, I don't want to have anything to do with it. Which is exactly the question the Gemara asked. Is that a valid terminology? And we say that this slip of paper that says, if you run away, I have nothing to do with you. That's, that, is a valid divorce. that is a valid emancipation. And therefore, we come to the conclusion that yes, I know is a valid, that the words, and the I don't want to have anything to do with you, is a valid emancipation. Okay, so let's just start the next Gemara. The debate between Rabbi Yehuda and the Rabbonon. The Mike and the what's the debate? Rabbonon Safra Yedayim Sheemech Kich is having Yedayim. The rabbis say that if you give over a divorce and it says that you are divorced and you're permitted to marry whoever you want, it's sort of obvious that the document is the vehicle of, of, of divorce. Even if it's not, even, even though it's your dime, it's sort of a handle. It doesn't, it's not specific in the document. And it's maybe it's not, it's not 100% clear, but it's sufficient, to, it's sufficient to divorce. And therefore, when you hand over a divorce and it says you, you're permitted to marry, it's clear that this document is the vehicle of divorce. If you discover, you says dime, shame, and is law having a dime. That uh, the fact that this circumstance seemed to indicate divorce is the, the, that the document is the vehicle of divorce is not sufficient. And therefore, with time of the cost of love, Dane, the Muchamil, the Baha'i Gita, come a Therefore, you must write the words of Dane, in other, i.e., that this doc, you write in the document that this document is the vehicle of divorce. And, and then the divorce will be valid. I like the cost of love, Dane, but if you didn't write that specifically, Amri, people might think, but the Bura Garsha, he divorced her verbally. He gave her the divorce, and he verbally said, and that verbal statement was the main component of divorce. The document is just, just to serve as a proof. And therefore, Rabbi Yehuda requires that the divorce itself be written, that the, divorce, that the document is the vehicle of divorce. So nobody gets, gets confused with the verbal statements. Okay, tomorrow we'll learn how to write a divorce, and uh, God willing, I'll try to send out a copy of divorce on the chat today, or email it to you. Ooh, email one to me. Email it to you, and uh, if you can take a look at it, you know, it's a very unusual document. Um, uh, get, take a look at it before tomorrow, things will be easier. If not, we'll go through it together tomorrow. Have a great day.